What's up? I'm currently walking through the streets of Narita, Japan. I've been following wheat this whole year from the field down the Columbia River by tugboat and now the wheat's going across the Pacific Ocean to one of our trade partners, Japan. So we wanted to spend some time in Japan to see how our wheat is being used by our customers. I'm primarily going to be following soft white wheat because it's a very important grain that we provide for the Japanese. Most importantly, we're just going to enjoy our time here, experience Japanese culture, and have a few Few proud moments as Idahoans seeing how our wheat is feeding people around the world. We took a train down to Tokyo. Once we got to Tokyo, we had a chance to get settled and kind of explore the city a little bit. The next day, we met up with Sadaka, who's a really friendly representative from US Wheat. Japan is the fourth largest bakery market in the world. If you want to see where Idaho soft white wheat is going, you can just come here, go look on any street corner, and you'll find a little quaint bakery that's selling cakes and other baked goods made out of soft white wheat. It tasted phenomenal, it had a little bit of a different taste to it than what you'd get in the United States. It's really yeah. it's richer, mm. earthy, <laughs> a little bit. Right. We had a good time chatting with her, eating these baked goods. And after that, we went out to a lunch, which was at a traditional noodle place here in Tokyo. The noodles are made from soft white wheat. They put one big bowl in the middle and then everyone kind of eats out of the same bowl. So it was a really cool to see the traditional experience, but also to get a taste some of uh, what our wheat is going into. And uh, I gotta say it was pretty good. <laughs> then we went to Sensoji Temple, which is actually the oldest temple in Tokyo. Back in ancient Japanese culture, it was a tradition to come out and celebrate a good grain harvest at the temple. It was so fun to get a go and see this temple and experience just a little bit of ancient Japan. It's pretty obvious where we are. We're right here. We need to get here. So call the police. We're lost. So then we met up with Charlie. Charlie's a U.S. wheat representative from Japan. We had a great time with him. It was a lot of fun to get a tour with him because he knows so much about how our wheat is actually being used in their country. He took us on a bullet train uh, down to Kobe. We were going 150 miles an hour down the rail. Then we went to a Soman factory. We met up with the guys who were running the show. We ate this really cool traditional meal. Japan and many of the neighboring Eastern Asian countries are using a substantial amount of wheat to make noodles. Soman are these really fine noodles that they use in all kinds of traditional foods and they're using soft white wheat to make it. As a lifelong Idahoan, I think that's pretty sweet. I had no idea that we were actually influencing Japanese traditional meals. So then we went into these factories. It was just stunningly beautiful. We, we had to put on these suits and go into this air chamber where it blew all the little dust specks off of us. They were actually starting with the flour that they were then mixing into dough. They were taking the dough and stretching it out, flattening it, and then eventually slicing out each individual noodle, which was then hung and taken over to be dried. They were hanging these noodles and drying them out in this pristine room all these big fans blowing, really beautiful place. They were taking the slices, they were baking them, drying them, cutting them, they were running down conveyor belts, and uh, eventually becoming these really beautiful little packages of soman. So then, we went to a couple confectionery shops. Both of these shops were over 100 years old, owned by the same family since they started. It was really cool to see how they were using soft white wheat to make these beautiful little snacks and treats that are so popular in Japan. They all look so good and tasted so good. We even got to go back into the kitchen and see how they were baking the cake and then frosting it. Uh, it was amazing. It was a really, really neat experience. Next morning, we got up, we hopped on our bullet train again, headed up north back to Tokyo. Then we went to see where the wheat was being transported off the ships into the mills. 
The wheat was being sucked up through these augers and sent over to the mill where it's turned into flour and then it's sent through these big trucks to all the places where the final product can finally be made. Our trip really concluded with the final meal with the family, with these three boys. One of them, the middle one named Kishin, he was having a birthday party. The cake that they used was almost a work of art. Uh, it tasted incredible. It was really fun to watch these kids eating this cake, uh, especially as an Idahoan, knowing that our state is actually sending this wheat across the ocean and that they're actually getting to benefit from it. Uh, it was very satisfying. And that's really what this whole trip was about. It's just been a phenomenal experience, the friendliness of the people over here, as well as getting to see how Idaho wheat is getting utilized and eaten on this side of the ocean. Sayonara. Sayonara.